This is how we do it. I'm loving it. Now, uh, are you got your SD card in there? The SD card is in there. Well, it wasn't in there earlier. It was not, which is why I had to go home and get it. Are you, are you plugged in this time? Mm-hmm. Because there was another time where you didn't plug it in, and uh, in, it stopped right in the middle of recording. You know, we just got to get started. We got a okay. uh, couple right. topics to go ba- over Battery today. Battery time going to get low? Is that why? Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash doctrine. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Welcome to Doctrine Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Jimmy Fowler. I am an elder candidate at Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. I'm Joe Thorne, lead pastor at Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. So I got to go first. You did, and like no, I nailed it. No, your words kind of ran together. My like, words you, always you, you run together. Need to, you need to enunciate. I I know how to enunciate. It's a good day. Mm-hmm. Saturday. Saturday. It was nice and cool this morning. It was. It was cool last night. I sat out on the porch for a couple hours. Oh, on the porch doing what? Writing. Writing and? Enjoying God's creation. And? That's pretty much it. No. Yeah, that was it. You know, people don't realize I FaceTimed Joe last night, and he tried to make the claim that he was allowed to smoke in his house. That I called a, him out on that it. That is a fact. Jen asks me to smoke in the house. She doesn't. Okay, no, wait, stop, stop, she stop, does. stop. That's Clarify. a fact. Clarify. Fact. She asks you to smoke a pipe in yes, the house. She loves when I smoke not a pipe. cigar. Not cigars. No, I'm not. not I'm not allowed to smoke a cigar. So Joe was the sitting house. there watching the kids, and he was grabbing his cigar out and trying to make me think he was about to light it up, and then he was like, "Oh, I just want to go outside because I enjoy the fresh air." <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't smoke in the house. No, nah, she won't. People let you don't. In. People don't like that smell. I like it. I think it's really good. Uh, what are we talking about today, man? Well, uh, today we're talking about a subject that uh, I am nervous about, just to be honest. It is Satan. And we're talking about Satan because we are experts on no, no, the no, subject. No, no, we no, know no. everything there is to know about no, the no, devil. No, no, that's not true at all. We are scholars of no, Satan. No, nowhere near. <laughs> we are nowhere near uh, scholars on this subject. And so I think we, you know, we take this with... We take this very serious, yes. You know, uh, and we took some time and wanted to carefully kind of think through um, what we were going to talk about and just kind of the way we we're going to talk about it uh, because it's such a difficult topic. Because I think there's there's a lot of confusion. Would you say that there's yeah. a lot of confusion on on the subject, um, and there's also just ignorance, like just right. the the avoidance of wanting to talk about it let's add a third thing into that mix right Mm -hmm. so like if you've got like a spectrum um you know you've got you've got some some truth out there some some great truth some great doctrine uh that i think a a smaller percentage of christians seem to have when it comes to demonology and satan um but then you have confusion yeah right which is understandable and uh and ignorance which which just you know it's it's it is a difficult topic and it most of the tribes, Christian tribes that we're a part of, yeah. don't spend much time here. No, you don't want to. But then there is also bad theology and even heresy as it relates to the devil. Yeah. And so what we wanted to do is talk about this in a sort of big picture way. Uh, we, wanted, we wanted to talk about it uh, in a practical and experiential sense because otherwise, what are we doing? Yeah, exactly. But we also want to admit that, you know, there's discuss, discussing the doctrine of the devil must be first and foremost biblical. Yeah. Before it is anything else. Yeah. And I, and, um, one of the things I, I do want to, uh, mention, and if you're okay, I haven't actually asked Joe about this is, uh, I know Joe for yourself, you've dabbled in the past. And I know it's something you don't, you don't talk about a lot. It's not something that you bring up. Um, and so, you know, I, I hope it's okay that I'm bringing it up. Uh, well, if it's not, it's too late now. It's too late now. <laughs> so, <laughs> forget you know, the permission. Go for the forgiveness. That's what yeah, that's it. You're, you'll forgive me, uh, and, I'll, and if not, I get you a cigar, and then you'll forgive me. So, 
do you want to talk about that? Like, sure. can you give us just a, a brief overview of your experience uh, right. in Satanism. Is that what it's called? Is that what you call it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was a Satanist for years in my teens. And um, the way that I've explained it to people when I do wind up talking about it is that I believed in the devil long before I believed in God. And not in the sense that does God exist or not, but I trusted in, uh, pursued the devil, uh, committed myself to him. And, uh, you know, the short story is I was a little kid who was picked on uh, a lot, didn't have many friends or, or, or any friends, and was really tired of who I had turned out to be as a boy. Um, you know, just kind of weak, insignificant, and forgotten. And I had great parents and, uh, and was loved there. But uh, the big questions that I was asking about the nature of life, the purpose behind uh, suffering and affliction, uh, the big questions no one could answer for me. Not my parents, not anyone mm-hmm. else. I'd never been to church ever. I'd never heard the gospel and uh, as I was wrestling with my identity, who I was, when I was in junior high, um, I found some books on witchcraft and was much more than uh, curious. I was hungry for this. And that led into Satanism, uh, the Anton LaVey variety, which is atheistic Satanism. And then that led me into theistic Satanism. And the difference between the two, just for those that don't right. know. Right. So Anton LaVey and the popular form of Satanism that you see in America today is not a belief in a person, the devil. Uh, they reject that notion and they reject God, but they, they favor Satan as an idea. And, um, and so there is a spiritual realm. There are rituals to perform. There are ways to manipulate the universe. But, but atheistic Satanism is very much about power, self-gratification. It's really a form of selfism. Okay, yeah. Whereas the theistic brand of Satanism is when you pledge yourself to this being. And, and, and these there's a lot of varieties here. But in general, I think it's fair to say that uh, among the, the theistic Satanists, they view God, whom we would call the Lord, as a deity if he exists, um, but that there would be many gods. Yeah. And that this God, the Judeo-Christian God, and uh, is basically um, a, the bad guy. He's the one putting restrictions on. He's the one who is leading us down the path of of, uh, of self denial rather mm-hmm. than self fulfillment and self gratification, self indulgence. Right. So um, Satan is the god that is the one you should be following because um, he is all about self gratification, mm-hmm. um, the fulfilling the desires of the flesh. And the like. So I, I went down that path and found everything that I wanted. The devil gave me friends and an identity, and I learned how to fight, and nobody picked on me anymore. And it wasn't because there was a satanic cape that I was wearing. No mm-hmm. one really knew I was a Satanist. But uh, I got all the stuff that I wanted girlfriend and, you know, all that stuff. Uh, I became popular. With the police, but not you know not with <laughs> not with uh, not with school kids, and uh, the I just I, that led me to a very quick dead end of despair through a whole series of situations and consequences that we don't have time to get into now, and that was when I began to hear the gospel for the first time when I was a senior in high school. So I know that the devil exists because Scripture tells me. And I have seen the work of the devil up close, uh, even before my conversion. I've seen demonic possession. I've seen some crazy stuff that I don't really have any explanation for outside of Scripture. If it was just what I had seen, I would be at a loss as to what to say about it. But uh, I think I have a better understanding of what went down back in the day because of what Scripture teaches. And I, and I know just from talking to you in the past, um, what not only was what was presented to you uh, when it came to Satanism drew you in, but there was also like the hopes and promises, uh, but there was also the passion behind it, the conviction yeah. behind it that drew you in. Um, and then also I know just from your, your story and, and talking with you uh, in high school, when you heard the gospel, it was, it was something beautiful, but it was also the individual you could sense believed it wholeheartedly and loved it the gospel themselves. So it wasn't like a nominal belief. It wasn't just this, this side, but there was a passion, uh, uh, and 
almost like a uh, an urgency mm-hmm. about the individuals that drew you to that conviction. Yeah, I when I read Anton LaVey and you know Alistair Crowley and, and I started reading all these different guys, um, I was captivated by their conviction and persuasiveness, mm-hmm. their um their 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 confidence and the answers that they had. They believed in what they were they, what they were talking about. They genuinely did. Um and what they said, the principles that they operated uh under resonated with my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, that was a part of it. And so when I finally met a real Christian and she began to tell me about Jesus, well, she had that level of conviction. And all of these young Christians, these were all mm-hmm. teenagers that God began to bring into my life at that time. They all had this conviction, this earnestness, this urgency, like you said. Uh, and the difference was their message, their story was true. Mm-hmm. It was real, and it just won. You it compare, you compare the, the the biblical truth, the the biblical story, the grand narrative of Scripture. You hold that up to any other story, any other worldview, and I just think it crushes everything in its beauty. That's right, and obviously in the fact that this is as, as we've come to see um, the one eternal truth. And here's something I think. Now, this is a side thing. This is me. Uh, what something beautiful about this story, you know, is not is is obviously the gospel itself is is the most beautiful part. But you were also talking about there was a group of individuals, a group of teens that you saw and and recognized that they can they were convicted and they believed in the beauty of the gospel. And these are still individuals that you're in contact with today, right? Yeah, yeah. The um... In fact, the the one girl that shared the gospel with me the most is a girl here in town. Mm-hmm. She, uh, it was her. Uh, I asked her on a date, and she was like, eh, "You know, let's we'll go out to the movies with some friends, and then we'll mm. talk and flirt to convert." That's what she was doing. At, well, I was flirting, and then she was doing the converting. well. She was doing the converting, and uh, she started telling me about Jesus. And at first, I just thought like, "Whatever," um, but I listened, and it took about. I don't know, uh, nine months before I was converted, nine months of despair. Mm-hmm. But it was her and then her parents who were you know, great Christians. And then, yeah, other believers that, uh, that God had brought into my life at that time, a lot of them have moved away. Mm-hmm. One of the men, maybe this is what you're getting at. This is what I'm getting at. Right, so yeah, here we go. One of the, he's a man now, but he's at the time, uh, there was a guy that used to work at what we call Sally's Subhouse. It's not there anymore, but it was a little restaurant. And I would go over there. I worked at the tire shop across the street as a teenager. So I would come across the street, and I would order a pizza puff or whatever. And, uh, and this, this guy, um, essentially, he, he started sharing the gospel with me. And that guy is now an elder candidate at Redeemer. Bam. And we have been friends uh, ever since my conversion. Uh, Rob and his family are, are, are dear friends to us. And there are, there are people here. We have uh, uh, an, an elder couple mm-hmm. that uh, were praying for me before I was uh, a believer. That's so, right. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty awesome, man. So why, why do we need to even talk about the devil? Like, isn't this, isn't this, um, like, kind of, it seems to most people to be a periphery issue, a peripheral issue. And when I talk to some reformed guys, they're like, bah, you know, I just, I make my struggles with the flesh, not the devil. I've got enough trouble in my own heart. I don't yeah. need to worry about the devil. Why do we need to study the devil? Well, I mean, you look at second Corinthians two, uh, verses 10 and 11 says this indeed, what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything has been for your sake in the presence of Christ so that we would not be outwitted by Satan for we are not ignorant of his designs. Right. And so that's, that's the thing right there is to not be outwitted and not ignorant of his designs, the way that he works yeah. in and around us for our ruin. Yeah, right? exactly. It's it's we can't we're not to be we're not called to be like ostriches throwing our head in the sand mm-hmm. and ignoring what's going on around us. Right, right. I mean, the devil does have schemes. Mm-hmm. He has plots and plans, like you said. And if we don't know how he operates, then we are setting ourselves up yes. for, uh, for a certain defeat. Um, 
And when you mean by certain defeat, what do you mean by that? Because you know, I think in the overarching theme, we, we know that our victory is in Christ. But when you when you say that a certain defeat, what are you referring to? Yeah, to the battle, not the war. Mm-hmm. You know, to um, you know, in our circumstances, the uh, if we don't know that that Satan is out to deceive and yes. to tempt, um, to discourage and accuse, to destroy. Right. Then if we don't know that and his schemes and how we are susceptible ourselves, we aren't ready for those attacks. And when they come, uh, we are are struck unaware and unable to defend ourselves properly. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a great book called Satan Cast Down by Frederick Lee. I think you pronounce his last name, Lee. It's L-E-A-H-Y. It's a crazy... No, it's Lehay. He also wrote no, the, that's not the same. No, that's not the same guy. <laughs> this guy uh, had better theology and... Uh, Here's what, here's what he said. He said, Christians who are virtually oblivious to the malignant opposition of the fallen angels are to some extent deficient, deficient in caution and dependence upon God. So when you know, like Martin Luther knew the devil was out to get him. Yeah. He knew that the devil was a real being. And, that, and when we say the devil and his activity, sometimes we're speaking directly about the devil. Sometimes we're talking about demons who are at work uh, on his behalf. But... He knew that the devil was at him, and so a part of his prayer life, a part of his understanding of his temptations was to, at times, resist directly, to yeah. confront the devil who was after him. So I, I think this, this idea that, well, we, can, we don't need a doctrine of Satan, we don't really need to know that much, is, is a problem. And there's a, there's a difference, right? There are, in terms of when you, when you start talking about the devil, we tend to see these two um, extremes, right? And I think in our camp, they—, they basically ignore the devil and then on the other extreme they all about the devil they, yeah he's behind every bush yeah right uh, uh behind every beer every beer every cigar every cigar every little thing that every somebody, dancing every movie yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> he's everywhere yeah, one more quote c.s lewis uh, in the screw tape letters said that there are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils one is to disbelieve in their existence the other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. Yeah. So that's not what we want. No. We want to have a talk, a conversation about Satan, who he is, and what he does. And so, and next next time on Thursday, right? Uh, we're going to be looking at spiritual warfare, mm-hmm. right? We're going to be talking about what what is spiritual warfare and what does that look like in the life of a believer. Right. Right. So, so. What are uh, ba- most basically, if you had to like boil it down, what does every Christian need to know about the devil? Uh, I think what we need to know about the devil is first, um, what is the devil's aim? You know, what is he? What does he do? What is his work in us today, or work around us today, uh, and his defeat? Right, right. So, like, what he does, how it's going to end for him. These are going to be crucial. Mm-hmm. And then, but, you know, who he is, like, let's just deal with that on mm-hmm. the front end. I mean, what is the devil? Is the devil a metaphor? Ooh. Is the devil just an idea? Is, uh, what is he? What would you, I mean, if you just had to say real simply to somebody, Daddy, what is the devil? What would you tell to your son? If, Co- if Cohen asked me, Daddy, uh, what is the devil? Yeah. Uh, just as a dad, what would you say to him? Uh, I would say first that he is the devil. The devil is an angel that has led other angels in rebellion against God, and that he is active today. Good, yeah. I, I don't know what else to say to that. I well, mean, other yeah. than what I can yeah. only go look at what Scripture says. Yeah, no, that's 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 really good. Um, the, he is a we could say he's a fallen angel. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is definitely active today. He's not just an idea. He is a being. Yeah. He is a person. Uh, and if that makes us primitive backwoods in the minds of some people, then I'm okay with that. Yeah. We exactly. have the beard for that, so they can call us backwoods all they want. Um, <laughs> when you're talking about the origin of the devil, you know, people will look at Isaiah 14 or Ezekiel 28. Mm-hmm. And now clearly these passages are, are dealing with kings and rulers in a particular context. But uh, many Christians throughout the history of the church have said, well, it's also dually speaking about the devil. It's addressing the devil at the same time. Um, and guys like Calvin and others would say like, well, you know, it, it can be sort of seen as, as, as related in some way, but really it's not about that. And we're not going to get into those passages. They're, they're good to read. Isaiah 14, uh, 12 through 15 and Ezekiel 28, 12 through 17. So you can check those out. Those are debated, 
But what is clear is what you said, Jimmy, like Jude six um, says that, you know, that they're that the, these demons left their proper abode. That's right. They went their own way. Uh, this devil is presently active. Uh, he is called the ruler of this world. Yep. In John twelve thirty one. Right. Right. And, and uh, he's he's called the, the God of this world. Mm-hmm. So he's definitely got a place. He's definitely he's got a um, a plan. Yeah. So. What is his basic plan? What is the devil's aim? That's what you. That's the word you used. Yeah, what is I, his aim? I think first is to destroy Christians. Okay, right. right. Uh, you, first Peter five eight says, "Be sober minded, be watchful." Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. And so, you know, I, I don't want to go to the other extreme of of the devil behind everything. You know, behind mm. the bush, every beer, every beer. You know, every beer, cigar, dancing, and beard, movie. beard. You keep saying beard. I keep hearing beard. I trimmed up my beard. It does look good, though. It does look good. It does look all right. Yeah, it's all right. But, you know, so I don't want to be, I'm not looking at that extreme, but I think we're, we're, we need to be mindful. We need to be mindful that he is out to destroy uh, us. And I think part of that is, is uh, the love that God has for us and the image of God that has been imprinted upon us. Yeah, I think the, the the just the fact that Peter says and that scripture tells us that the devil is not just out there but out there to destroy us or to devour us, to consume us, to to wreck us uh demands that we pay attention. Yeah. Demands that we have a proper theology of this mm-hmm. and, and not an abstract theology that doesn't impact how we live, think or pray, but That's one right. that actually informs how we live, think and pray. Uh I like that live, think and pray. So it, it, he tells us right in First Peter to be sober-minded and watchful, to be serious. Yep. So we'd be serious about this. This is not a joke. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of us laugh at the Far Side cartoons that have the devil in hell and they're doing yeah. all these things. Yeah, and, yeah. And those are funny. Just because something is wrong, people, doesn't mean it's not funny. Yeah. Okay, like the so vid angel. Uh, the vid angel. Uh, the vid angel. All right. Uh, commercials. Right. That's very funny. Those are hilarious. So, but I don't know that it's wrong. I think vid angel's fine. But here, here's the point: is that. Um, we we look at those things that tend to make light of the devil, and it can really cause us to sort of relax and not think that we need to have uh, a strategy and uh, a theology of this. But clearly we need to, to be sober-minded and watchful because there is real danger. And it's not just danger for us, it's danger for the world at large, because like what you're saying, Jimmy, is that the devil's aim is to destroy Christians. But we also know that his aim, and he's very effective at this, mm-hmm. is to deceive the world. That's right. In okay. 2 Corinthians 4, uh, verse 4, Paul says that, uh, that the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So here's an effective ministry that he has we can call it a ministry that we are um we're, we are we can see how the, the devil does a pretty good job of leading people away from the truth of the gospel until god says enough yeah um and i keep thinking of I, in my head i just keep going back to it i'm actually trying to find the quote do you remember the movie the usual suspects oh yeah i do the guys are usual so say. Kaiser so sad. Yes, the the biggest. Do you know the quote? Because I know the quote. Uh, uh. Because it's not original to that movie. Ah, uh, well, you can. Well, all right, what's the quote? I'm looking for it. You just say it. The biggest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. Exactly. Exactly. And so I think that's part of that whole this whole thing about being sober minded, being watchful, and being blinded. Right. Not yeah. not being blinded um, as unbelievers, but to keep. Uh, that we've got the light of the gospel of glory of Christ, and we're able to see. Our eyes have been open. We're able to recognize uh, what is going on around us, and the the beautifulness of the gospel. Well, what's not beautiful is the the yard worker out there <laughs> wagging the weeds. <laughs> I can see the look on your face. I'm like, I'm oh like, no! <laughs> so uh, you'll have to excuse the noise of uh, of the landscape landscaper uh, in the background. Yeah, that's really good, man. Um, and so 
specifically then, if the devil's aim is to destroy us and, and to deceive the world, um, specifically, we can say that the devil's work breaks down into a few different things, right? Mm-hmm. We could talk about the, and, and we see this throughout scripture, right? The devil is an accuser. The devil is a liar, a deceiver, a tempter, and a murderer. So yeah, start with accuser. Like where do you, where do, I mean, we see that in Job too, right. but how do we see that in the life of a believer? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if you're unfamiliar with Job, uh, you know, God is, uh, Satan is um, before the Lord, and he is essentially saying that Job will not confess you as God. He will not confess you as good if you allow me to afflict him. Mm-hmm. And so God gives him permission. God gives the devil permission to go to work yeah. on the Lord's servant, Job. And Job holds fast to his faith. Um, and so the, the accusations that seem to be common today, and I can think about in, in my life or in the life of Martin Luther, we'll, let's use, use Luther as an example. Uh, you can read his Table Talk book or, or a bunch of other uh, of Luther's writings to see how he writes about his relationship with the devil. And we, I would call it a relationship because it is intimate and volatile. Mm-hmm. Uh, he frequently believes that the devil is accusing him of being too sinful to be loved by God, to be, to, to be, that he's too weak uh, to be a true Christian. And uh, Luther would say things like, you know, when the devil accuses me that I am a worthless sinner and that uh, I, I do not deserve God's grace, what I say to him is, you are right. I am a worthless sinner and I do not deserve God's grace, but God loves sinners like me. And so I think the devil accuses us by drawing attention to our sins and our failures and our weaknesses by uh, he accuses us as being a people whose faith is nominal Mm -hmm. in name only. It's not real. Yeah. So you can think in your own life about how, you know, when you begin to to struggle with doubt, there can be doubt about, you know, the the veracity of the word of God, or you can be doubting. Uh, the authentic nature of your own faith. So is that then? Is that the work then of the devil as liar and deceiver? Well, I think that's accuser, and it connects to liar and deceiver. I mean, because he accuses us in order to deceive us. Yeah. And in accusing us, he is oftentimes lying. Sometimes he's just spinning the truth. But I, you know, I we we know that you know he is this. Um, oh, what? How did you say it? We we know that that he bends the word of God, he twists it to, in order to lead us away from the very thing that God has said. So, like, in the are you gar- thinking of the the temptation of Christ? Well, I'm right now. I'm thinking about uh, Genesis, but also in the temptation of Christ in in Luke. So, you know, in the garden, the devil says to Eve, like, "Did God say you can't eat any of the fruit in this garden?" Well, that's not what God said. And Eve's on it. She's like, no, no, no. He didn't say that. Yeah. He said, I cannot eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but of all the other trees, I can eat. And uh, because the day that I eat of it, I will die. So first, he's, 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 he's trying to de- deceive her. And now he goes to, into lying. He's like, you will not die yeah. if you eat that. Because if you do eat it, you will know the difference between good and evil, and you will be made like God. That's right. So he's deceiving her, he's lying her, he's tricking her, and then in you know in the te- with the temptation of Christ, it's it's a similar thing. He's saying he's he's saying Jesus, if you really so here's the accusation deceiving thing, right? Jesus, if you really are the Son of God, then why don't you go ahead and cast yourself down from the temple? You're not gonna you're, you're not gonna die. That's right. You're the Son of God. So why don't you do it? And he quotes scripture to do so. I, I you know I, I've been talking to. Um, uh, a person here at Redeemer recently who has been struggling with mm. assurance. And by every indication that I can see, this person is a believer. They, they love the Lord. Um, and part of what we wound up talking about as I'm counseling this person is how the devil accuses us and what our recourse is. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about spiritual warfare. Okay, so we talked about accuser. We've talked about uh, liar and deceiver. What about his work as a tempter? First Thessalonians 3, 5 says this. For this reason, when I could endure it no longer, I also sent to find out about your faith for fear that the tempter might have tempted you and our labor would have been in vain. And I, I mean, I, I feel like this is one of the primary means mm-hmm. uh, that 
I sense his affliction, you know, uh, or maybe, you know, on my life, right, is is through temptation. Because from there, when I give in to that temptation, then I then I receive the accusations, right. Um, so this this feels like for me a a, a gateway. It's almost like a gateway drug mm-hmm. uh, into the rest. Yeah, and temptation works differently, right? Because I think when most of the time when we think about temptation, we think like, oh well, I'm I'm tempted to um, to overindulge, right? To yeah. gluttony, drunkenness, lust. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to uh, yell at somebody or steal. We we think of a of a, of a corresponding sin that that's that, right. That's maybe a, a common uh, trouble for us. But the temptation isn't always to just commit an act that you know is wrong. Uh, sometimes the temptation is to doubt. Yeah. Right. Sometimes the temptation is to believe something that isn't true. And I mean, this is common to all believers, right? We, we, we tend to drift. Our hearts are prone to wander Mm -hmm. and it's not very hard for us to find ourselves in a situation where we, we, we wind up seeing this lure that looks good. Yeah. It's got bait on it. Yeah. And there's confusion in our hearts and we uh, we we know it's probably not a good idea it, it, but then we we go down that road and then you know by the time we've actually you know taken the bait the hook has got us mm-hmm. and you know we really are snared and you know, what paul says here in first thessalonians what you just quoted is he said listen i i needed to find out about you because i had a concern that the devil in his tempting would have been effective enough yeah. for it to cause real trouble and ruin. Like I, I, I was concerned. Paul did not have uh, an, an irrelevant theory of the devil in his mind. Right. It was he, he. He said, "No, the devil is real, and I'm concerned that the that the work of the devil, that his evil ministry, is producing fruit, and my gospel ministry isn't." So I wanted to find out what was going on, and of course, what he found out was that the work of God was doing well in mm-hmm. Thessalonica. So a temptation is a real is a real problem, and that's probably what m- most of us think about. But he he's also called a murderer in John eight forty four. Mm. Um, he was he's called you know Jesus says he was a murderer from the beginning, and it, people think like well how is the devil of a murderer? I mean it, he, it, the Bible says that he has the power of death, but yeah, but is is every death that we see a a, a consequence of the devil's ministry? Mm. I don't think so. Um, I, I, I think that what we really we see here in Scripture, and it's not crystal clear uh, of all the ways in which the devil might be a murderer, but what we do know is that he, he, he sought to kill Christ, you know, from before Christ was born. He, he sought to destroy uh, Israel, to destroy the Jewish people. Uh, he, he sought to destroy Christ during his ministry. And then, of course, when Christ dies... He wins. Yeah. The, uh, Satan loses. Christ wins. Um, but we also see that when it comes to demon possession, that frequently there is not just bondage, but there is a consequence of death uh, because of you know what the demons are leading people to do. And I know you you've talked about that before um, in your experience in in Satanism, right? Where you've witnessed um, some of these you know you, you witness possession and ultimately um death yeah i i've just and i'm sorry i'm not trying to bring up a, a, a yeah. i know we haven't talked about this so it's uh, you know i owe you a cigar a good one um right the whether and demon possession is a whole nother subject and maybe we can talk about that at a at a later time yeah but Yes, what what I have seen uh, up close and what I read in Scripture is very much the same. Um, I've experienced and seen the devil accuse, lie, deceive, tempt, and kill. And the the concerning part is that most people who are under the oppression of the devil don't mm-hmm. even know it. They have a a hundred different reasons for what they're going through, and they're not even really sure uh, what the solution is, if there is a solution. Um, you know, the a good friend of mine, a close friend of mine, who was uh, deeply involved in Satanism, he had uh, 
got involved in a in, in a cult and was really oppressed. I've se- I had seen him demon possessed. Uh, I, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced now, just as much as I was back then, that this was a real possession. And this was a guy that was going to a Christian high school at the time. Hmm. So he certainly had heard the gospel. He, he, was, he was no Christian. I mean, we were not Christians. But uh, that's where he was going to school. And, you know, when he died in a, in a car wreck, um, it raised a lot of questions for me at the time because he was so miserable and he would he would he told me how how he felt oppressed and and controlled and miserable because of what he had gotten into and then when he died in a car wreck um you know i don't think that the that the devil grabbed the steering wheel yeah but i do think that he was he was walking down a path you know led by the devil that ultimately led to his ruin and so this is, I would imagine, in the mind of the devil, a success story, you know, for him. And of course, I don't know what happened yeah. in the in the the day or two leading up to uh, that car accident. Who knows what God might have done exactly, in this person's yeah. life? Um, I, I will leave that in in the in the in the sovereignty of God and in His will. But the devil is is alive and active. Scripture paints a very clear picture. I mean, we don't know a ton about the devil, but what we do know is very clear. There are uh, tons of verses in the Old Testament and the New Testament. My count is just under a hundred of uh, verses that um, that speak about the devil and his ministry in the Old and in the New Testaments. But uh, it, what we really need to do is to make sure that the the theology that we develop about the devil and about demons is first biblical, but then that it gives birth to an experiential awareness and a posture for defense so that mm-hmm. we know how to live life in an evil age. And so, Joe, I think, you know, what you're saying is, is be educated, you know, read up on the subject, um, you know, have a, have a healthy understanding of, of the devil and, and his schemes and, you know, Joe, sometimes people don't have time to read. They just, they're busy, a lot of things going on around them. And so, audible.com. Our friends over at audible.com are offering the listeners of Doctrine and Devotion a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to check out their service. And we want to recommend a classic, Institutes of Christian Religion by John Calvin. And so to download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash doctrine and uh, you can go ahead and grab your audiobook there. They could choose whichever book they want. They don't mm-hmm. have to get Calvin's Institutes. That's right. 180,000 titles to yeah. choose from. So I mean, it's like get whatever you want. Try it out. If you don't like, if you don't want to keep the service, cancel it. No charge. Keep the book. Mm-hmm. It's a good deal. We love Audible and Institutes. You need it. Come on, get it. You listening right now? Get it. No, no, not you. The other guy. Yeah, you. You haven't read this. You, but you don't have time to read it, but you can you can listen to it. Listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Get going. Drive. At work. At work. Uh, I can't do that at work. And now my commute is short. So, like, I have to I have to actually go on the back porch and mm. light up a cigar. Oh, oh, you're suffering. Yeah. You are so suffering. Well, then it's going to get cold. Oh, God. Tell us again of your afflictions. And then I'll have to go to my heated garage. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So let's talk about Satan's defeat then, mm-hmm. because Satan can be presented to people as, well, he's no joke. The Satan is yeah. a foe, an ancient yeah. foe. He is, uh, he, he he's works He's not the through, foe-foe. He's an ancient foe. Oh, man, you are half of the devil. No, foe. that's not even foe-foe. foe-foe. No, that's not funny. Dang. You can't say that. You are, you are ancient foe-foe. <laughs> <laughs> that is horrible. So he, he's, he's, he's active. He's dangerous. Scripture tells us he's dangerous and to be aware, mm-hmm. but... He is not God. That's right. He is not omnipresent. He is not omniscient. Uh, he cannot do anything that he wants. He can only do those things that the Lord allows him mm-hmm. to do in his sovereignty. And we have this assurance that you mentioned early on, Jimmy, that uh, of Satan's defeat. That's right. And so first is defeated through Jesus' life and ministry. If you look at Luke 10, yeah. when Jesus sends out the 72, they come back with the report. And Jesus talks about seeing Satan, uh, was it? cast out or fallen from the sky yeah, or falling like lightning, falling yeah. like lightning from the sky. Right. And so Jesus's life and ministry through that Satan is defeated. Right. You know, Jesus is his obedience. And also you look at Luke 11, the strong man. And now here, 
Joe, I'd like for you to talk about this one because I and maybe this is something we'll talk a bit more on the next one. But I've heard this passage. Uh, and if you don't know that passage, it's the strong man. Uh, he gets bound up. Um, I've heard that passage being used repeatedly and in the context of demon possession. Right, right. Well, that's uh, that's not really what the the passage is about at all. So, um, you know, in, in, in Luke 10, he sends out the 72. They're performing miracles and they're yeah. blown away. Yeah. And Jesus is like, why are you surprised, fools? Yeah. I saw Satan falling down like we're defeating him. Boom. And then in Luke 11, Jesus is is casting out demons and people are saying, hey, look, um, you, <laughs> you're casting out demons. Uh, and we know the only way you could pull that off is if you were in league with the devil. And so Jesus' response is, you guys are dummies because yeah. then that would mean Satan is fighting himself. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm defeating Satan with Satan's help? How does that work? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he, he, he gives this picture. He says, look, um, I can't, you can't walk into a strong man's house and take his stuff. You have to go in there, and you've got to bind him. You've got to tie him up, mm-hmm. toss him to the side. Then you take the stuff. And it's sort of a thug analogy. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a tough guy analogy. And so Jesus, Jesus thug life. That's right. And Jesus is saying, like, listen, man, I, I punked the devil. I came in here. I bound the devil. Revelation 20, everybody. I bound the devil in my ministry, in my preaching, in my, in my casting out of demons. I, I, I have bound the devil. I have overcome him. He is, he is being taken down and ultimately defeated. So, yeah, you're right. Through his life through his ministry, this is happening, but it's also happened through his death yeah. and resurrection. And this is what we usually think of uh, when we think about the, the, the defeat of the devil, like in Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, where Paul says, when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. So, so God uh, overcame uh, all rulers and authorities, these satanic spiritual powers, and essentially put them on display as mm-hmm. judged, ruined, and mocked, having triumphed over them through Jesus Christ. And then again in Hebrews chapter yeah. 2, verses yeah. 14 and 15, since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself, Jesus, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. So Jesus conquered the devil through his life and through his death and through his resurrection. So the devil has really lost. Yeah. But also, though, through the church, through Jesus' church, right. Romans sixteen twenty says this, mm-hmm. the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. I now it's that. done in, in the in in God's strength, right? And it's it's God who has done the work, and, but He's continuing it through the church, yeah. into the world as we're called to make disciples, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit by immersion, believers' <laughs> baptism. You know, so so the work continues. Now right, we right. proclaim the gospel. We proclaim the light of Christ to a blind and dark world, and. God's going to do what God does That's and right. reveals himself to people, drawing them to himself. And he raises the spiritually dead. Mm. You know, I mean, he, he sanctifies weak and weary sinners. That's right. And uh, I love it's one of my favorite verses is Rome. You, you can't believe you pulled up Romans 16, 20. I was going to pull up Romans 16, 20. It's such a good one. Um, the God of peace. Yep. Will crush the Satan. Yeah, the assurance that we have. <laughs> I love that this, that he's the God of peace who crushes. <laughs> he establishes peace by destroying the enemy. Yeah, uh, that's so good, man. And then obviously that peace with him. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And we know that uh, you know when Jesus returns, that the devil is ultimately done. Right. We read it in Revelation twenty, where uh, the devil is thrown into uh, the lake of fire and he's tormented day and night forever and ever so we know the end i'm not afraid of the devil i don't think christians need to be afraid of the devil but we do need to be careful because he is smart and i would say this way look the devil is smarter than you Hmm. the devil probably knows more scripture than you um the devil is stronger than you 
And the devil knows you well enough. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your, your blind spots. That he has schemes and strategies that are aimed specifically for you. So we need to be careful, but we don't need to be afraid. Mm -hmm. And our boldness should be that um, Christ is in us, that Christ is with us, yeah. because Christ is for us That's and right. demonstrated that through his life, death, and resurrection. So why would I fear the devil who is already judged and defeated? He's still active, so I need to be on my toes. I need to understand um, how do I resist the devil? Yeah. I mean, how does that actively work? We read about that in James, I think. Um, how does it work when... Um, when we're faced with the strong man, um, what do we do? What does spiritual warfare in this context really look like? And we'll talk about that on Monday or when, or what is it? Thursday? Thursday. We're going to talk yeah, about it on Thursday. Thursday. Good job, buddy. So for now, what we really wanted to do was just give a big picture on Satan himself. Mm -hmm. He is a threat, but he is, as Luther says, the devil is God's devil. He can only do what God allows. Mm -hmm. He is a dog on a leash. Yeah. That's why I named my dog <laughs> Lucifer. Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she is a dog. A dog. It, so there you go. So, Joe, I'm going to leave this one to you. Okay. Um, are there any books that you would recommend? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll recommend two for, for this podcast. Mm -hmm. One is what I mentioned earlier, Frederick Lee A. Satan Cast Out. It's a really good book on Satan and demonology. It's not big. It's published by Banner of Truth. It's got a horrible cover, but it's a really <laughs> good book, and I would encourage everybody to pick it up. So start there. Also, um, Dr. Russell Moore's book, Tempted and Tried, oh. is beautifully written and just packed with truth. It is so good. Um, I, when I read it, I was, I was genuinely blown away by, by not just by... Because I read books that are good, and it says yeah. good stuff, but, man, Russ has a way of writing that's beautiful. It's just, he's so good with words. So, Tempted and Tried by Russ Moore and Satan Cast Out by Frederick Lee. Uh, start with that. That's a um, place to start. We want to give a special thanks to Justin Bond of J. Bond Media, the audio and visual wizard of... Uh, Doctor and Devotion, head on over to J-Bond Media, uh, and if you've got any photography, audio, or video needs, he can hook you up. This is the guy you want to be in contact with. Yeah. In fact, you know that other guy or that other girl you're thinking about hiring for that stuff? Mm, not them. They ain't no good. Mm -mm. No. You I mean, mean, like, they're okay, but- But you they know, ain't J-Bond. Yeah. No. You want If you want, like, a C-plus, go with them. You want, like, A-plus. Go with Jay Bond. Justin Bond. That's right. Uh, you know what we love? Uh, it's always fun uh, for us. It's always encouraging for us when you guys give us some feedback, especially when you leave a, re a review for us at mm -hmm. iTunes or one of the other uh, podcast applications. Uh, I, Jimmy recently put up a, a screen grab of one of the best um, reviews that we've ever received for the podcast. Yes. So you can find that on our social media. Is it on Facebook? It's on Facebook okay. and Twitter. So good. So uh, we love it when you do that. And so leave us an honest review. Uh, yep. make five it, stars. Five stars is, is probably the best, most That's probably honest. a conservative, conservative. If you can give honesty. six, they, then do that. Yeah, yeah. But we'll settle for five. Yeah. Um, but ha and have some fun with it. Be creative. Be honest. Um, and spread the word. We, we, we love hearing from you guys and mm -hmm. hearing how you other people find it from a recommendation of a friend. Yep. So you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at Doc and Devo. Obviously, I just mentioned we're on Facebook, so you can find us there. And uh, we would love for you to leave us comments or emails. We get tons of those. We get a mm -hmm. bunch of them every day, and we read them all. And uh, if it requires a response, we do respond. If you ask for a response, we'll respond. Uh, otherwise, if it's a recommendation, we file it, and we have this super long list of topics that we are eager to cover. Thanks for doing our work for us. Yes. And so hold on now. How do they leave their comments and ideas? Well, they can just kind of just like wish it real hard. Just kind of declare it? Just, just say it. Here's and, my idea. And we, we'll, we'll find it. What's, what's the other way? Carrier pigeon? Uh, post owl? Isn't that the same thing as a carrier pigeon? No, it's an owl. And okay, first of all, so that's a difference. And that's okay, Harry but hold Potter. On. Your world. post owl yeah. is Harry Potter, right? Okay. Way better than carrier pigeon. Okay, but one's real, one's not. Uh, I've never seen a carrier pigeon. Just because you haven't seen it. Same. Okay. Oh come on! You're talking about the. 
Am I acting like a muggle? Who knows more about witchcraft, like me or you? I'll post. All right. Fair enough. So Fair uh, enough. you can go to doctrineanddevotion.com, and we have a, a page there that says contact us. You can hit that, and then you can uh, leave us a message. We would love to hear from you. You can also hit the sign-up page, and you can uh, sign up and receive by email all of our new content the day that it goes out. So you always get a reminder. Mm-hmm. And when we give away free content, like 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 free like downloads and stuff, like we'll be doing that pretty soon, you're only going to get it if you're on the mailing list. That's right. Sign up. Thanks, guys, for uh, checking in. Uh, we'll be back every Monday and Thursday, and we will see you later. Later. Later.